In this video, we're going to look at flowcharts. So let's begin by looking at some of the key components of flowcharts. So first of all, we've got our start and our end, or our start and our stop. These are shown in symbols like this, and you'll start at the top usually, and you'll work your way down to the very end of the flowchart, and then you'll see the symbol which is stop. Next, input and output. The inputs and outputs, they're represented in parallelograms like so. Um, often they will say input n or input a certain letter or variable. And uh, whenever you've got to print something or write something down, it'll say print n or print whatever letter they're talking about in the question. Next, an action or a process. These are represented in rectangles and you'll be told to maybe change your variable by maybe increasing by one or doing something. And I will tell you inside of those rectangles what you've got to do. Decision. When you get to a decision, it'll be in a rhombus like this and you'll have to decide which path to then take. So for instance, this one says, is n divisible by 8? There'll perhaps be one path for yes and one path for no and you'll decide which way to go. And finally, there's flow lines. Flow lines are lines like so with arrows, which just tell you which way to go. That's it. Let's have a look at an example. So let's have a look at our first example. So our first example says, starting with a equals 1 and b equals 3, use the flowchart to find the values printed. So let's start with a equals 1 and b equals 3. So it says start, yep, input a and b, yep. Calculate t, uh, calculate t, which is equal to a squared plus b squared. So we're going to square a value for a, which is 1, and we're going to square a value for b, which is 9, and we're going to add them together to get t, which is going to be 10 in this case. Is t larger than 90? Well, no, it's not, so we're going to go to the right. Add 1 to a and add 1 to b. So let's add 1 to both of those, so that'd be 2 and 4. Now again, we've got back round to calculate uh, t equals a squared plus b squared. So we're going to square these both now. So it's going to give us 4 plus uh, 16, which is equal to 20. Uh, is t larger than 90? Well, no. So we're going to add 1 again. So it's going to be 3 and add 1, which is 5. And it says calculate t, which is equal to a squared plus b squared. So we're going to square the 3 and we're going to square the 5. We're going to add them together, which is 34. Is t larger than 90? No. So again, we add 1 to both of them. So we add 1 to get 4 and 6. This time we're going to do 4 squared plus 6 squared. And that gives us 52. Is t larger than 90? No. So add 1 to both of them. So that's going to be 5 and 7. So again, we're back around to calculate t equals a squared plus b squared. So 5 squared plus 7 squared is equal to 74. Is t larger than 90? No. So again, add 1 again. So it's going to give us 6 and 8 this time. So we've gone back around to calculate t equals a squared plus b squared. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to 100. Is t larger than 90? Yes. So we go down. And it says print a and b. So we print them both. So we get a equals 6 and b equals 8. And we stop. And that's it. And that's that question on flowcharts completed. Next question. Okay, so this is our second example. So the question says, starting with n equals 50, use the flowchart to find the number printed. So let's start. Input n. So n's 50. This time we haven't been given a table, so I'm just going to jot down here the number we're starting with. And it says, is n divisible by 8? Well, 50 is not divisible by 8, so we're going to go to the right, and it says add 1 to n. So that's not divisible by 8, so that's not our number. We're going to add 1, so that's 51, and then we're going to go on round. So is n now divisible by 8? So 51. Well, no. So again, we go to the right, add 1, so that's going to be 52, and we go on around. Is that divisible by 8? No. So again, we add 1, so it's going to be 53. Um, is that divisible by 8? No. So we've got the idea here, we're going to keep on going around until we get a number that's divisible by 8. So we'd have 54, no, 55, no, and then 56. So we've got around 56. So 56 is divisible by 8, so we go to yes. Is n divisible by 6? So is 56 divisible by 6? Well, no, it's not. So we're going to cross that out, and we're going to go to the right. And then it says add 1 to n, and we're going to go up and back around to is it divisible by. So we're going to add 1 to it, so that's 57. And when we get to that add 1, we're going to go up again, and we're going to go to the left, and now we're back around to divisible by 8. So we're going to keep on going around in this loop until we get another number that's in the 8 times tables. So 57, no. 58, no, 59, no, 60, no, 61, no, 62, no, 63, no, 64, 
Yes. So we've got around to adding one, we've got the 64. Is it divisible by eight? Yes. Is it divisible by uh, six? No. So we're gonna go back around and we're gonna go up and it says add one. So it's gonna be 65. And we're now back up into divisible by eight loop. So is that divisible by eight? No. 66? No. 67? No. 68? No. 69? No. 70? No. 71? No. 72. So we're at 72. Is that divisible by eight? Yes, it is. Is 72 divisible by six? Well, yes it is, it's 12 times six. So we're gonna go down for yes, and it says print n. So we're gonna print 72, and then we stop, and that's it. That's the second example done.